I knew I should be in a relationship with God, but it's like, I didn't know him like that. Like he wants 10% of my money. I don't know him like that. You're not giving a stranger on the street 10% of your money. You're not. You're not showing up every week to see somebody you don't know. That's the problem. We'll teach the rules and regulation, but we won't even think like, do you even want to know him like that? Do you even care to know him like that? And so we'll fake the funk. Like, oh, I love the Lord. It's like, you don't even really know him. And you really don't want to spend time with him. And that's okay. But just be real so that you can move forward past that part. But we we stay in this weird place where we're like faking it, where we're like, I don't, I know I should, but I don't want to be honest in the fact that I'm not really feeling God like that. But it's like, at the end of the day, the only people you stun for is us. God knows. He knows you're not showing up. He knows you don't care. You know, I mean, and, and that's not, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. Like that's the process of life. But we're not even being open and vulnerable enough to where we can say, Lord, I really don't check for you, but I want to. What's going on, everybody? This is Abby here with another episode of Modern Day Unicorns. Today, I have Melissa Wilcox with me, who's going to share uh, more about her amazing journey and the things that she's doing for our community. So, Melissa, welcome. Thank, Thank you, Abby. How are you? Thank you so much for being here. Now, we want to we want to get right into it because I feel like you have a lot to share with us. Oh, today. right. So, can you please yes. tell us a little bit more about yourself, where you're from, what you're doing, things like that. Oh, uh, my name is Melissa Wilcox again. I am from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I'm the creator, founder of Be Consistent Girl, where I just really encourage women to be consistent in their spiritual life and in their health and wellness and just life overall. So I create products and tools just to assist women with that. That's wonderful. That's so can you, so uh, yeah, we're going to go pretty much right into it with you saying, what you're doing now let's let's get it let's let's take it back a little bit so what have you okay maybe what did you go to school for if you went to school because i'm trying to build up to how you got to this point with the things that you're creating now so where was what what were you initially doing because i feel like this is a pivot well yeah it is it's a pivot um started off well by profession i'm a dental hygienist which i still am but uh you know i went to school um studied sociology and health and then i ended up going to hygiene school so i was practicing hygiene for over a decade um and i guess working in healthcare you are more health conscious so really just focusing on that and then i started um my back in 2000 the end of 2017 beginning of 2018 i started um, an Instagram page called Eat Whole Live Fit. And so it just basically documented my journey, basically trying to navigate healthy eating, but also like not being caught up in, uh, well, well, I don't know a really good politically correct way to say it would be, but it's just like the like bougie of it all. Like it's like the whole foods and it's like no shade to whole foods, but you know, they having like, whole eating be something that's like inaccessible Mm. and expensive basically. And especially for women of color, like we always feel like that's maybe not our thing. Um, We're not really always raised in that way, especially being from the South. So it was just basically like whole eating, um, not being like overdone, just like the easiest way to kind of navigate that. And I've grown up just like a really spiritual person, um, more religious, growing up but more spiritual now just like not necessarily rules and regulations but really just connecting with god on a relational level and so i've always had like a really deep relationship with god through just personal time with him and like having that morning time with him so back in 2018 i just really started being intentional about getting up early creating a morning routine that started with um spending time with God every single day. And then it just kind of flourished into something that I wanted to share with everybody because it really changed my whole entire life and my perspective on life. And then it changed my marriage and the way that I parent um, and the way that I actually do my job. So it was just like everything for me and for women like me, uh, consistency started there. And so I just wanted to create tools to help women 
who feel like they don't have the time or they don't know what to do, any of that, I wanted to kind of alleviate that pain point and just encourage them just to make the time and then everything else mm. will flow from that. So this is like the really long extended version of like, girl, what do you do? So no, that's no, it. but you, yeah. you said, you said a lot of key <laughs> things there. And one of the things that I want to bring out, um, was the fact that this is some a journey that you went through personally. And when you saw the value yeah. in your transition, you wanted to share it with other people. Um, and in that Absolutely. sharing, you know, you, you're having re you're, you created resources that, that will help, but being able to make a business out of that. And I really wanted to, to make that a key because I feel like a lot of people think that the, the, the only the things that we have to do are the things we went to school for. You know, we were really pushed into, you know, go get a good education and, you know, all that little hobby that you got won't make you any money. But, you know, and it's not that it, you know, right. what you're doing is, is solely for the purpose of money. Thankfully, you know, I've, I'm, I pray that you have the opportunity right. to do so, but it can be just something that you're just interested in or something that helped you along the way. Right. Right. It, um, it really has been interesting to see the transition from feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm like that type a, like go to school, do this, do that. Like I was like on the path, like I'm going to do this. This is a sure way. I'm going to have a career and I'm going to go down this path and I'm just going to stay on it. And it's just interesting how God will lead you on a different path that is not as sure, but it does have to have more mm -hmm. faith in order to do it. And so uh, yeah, if you would have told me I'd have been doing uh, that, I would only want to be doing this. I would have been like, you're a liar because I'm going to take the sure way all the time. Oh, wow. <laughs> Every time. So are you working but, yeah. on making this uh, oh, a yeah. full-time situation? Is that the goal at the moment? Yeah, that is the goal at the moment. Um, but you know, what I realized is ever since I started this, I was like, oh yeah, God, you gave me this vision. Oh, this is what I'm doing for, this is it. Like I'll quit my job today. Like we could just do this. And he was like, uh, that's not what's happening here. <laughs> and I can tell you that he said no. So I am still working in healthcare. Um, and I, I guess my shift on it is just like, there's so that's still a way to fulfill the purpose, but it's just mm -hmm. in that way. It's just a different lane. And so it's more to me, the career is more about just service and being available in that avenue. Because you never know. I mean, I meet so many people. I come in contact with so many patients that, you know, I'm still able through word of mouth and through just my actions to be able to impact people in that way as well. Like I can easily tell them exactly what I do on the side and encourage them in the same way. And so he still got me in that arena. Um, but I'm prayerful that we'll just be able to transition hopefully sooner than later. Um, and I can do this full time. Cause that's really so what I'm gonna, I want to do. Ask, like, uh, how have you been able to uh, manage the balance? So from what I understand, you still have the full-time job, you have your business, you also have like your family. Sorry, I did that in the wrong order. Family, <laughs> career, <laughs> and business, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So how how have you been able to, you know, strike a balance with that and be effective in all areas? Well, now, before it was, I was working well, sort of full-time, it was four days a week. I'm down to three days a week now. So I do have more time on Thursdays and Fridays um, to work on the business. But before then it was, it, that was another reason. It was like me getting up early at the same time with God was one part of it, but it was also like taking the extra time that I had, like, okay, maybe I only have 10 minutes or 30 minutes to like work on something. But it was like in faith, just like if I just show up, if I can just give the 10 minutes now, you know, it can turn into something. You'll be amazed what you can do. I can edit a video. Uh, you know, I can edit a video now. Easy. Like that's, I mean, it's just, I, I could do it so quickly now just on the phone. I can just like, well, let me just edit this real quick or let me write something like write an email that I'm going to send out later on. It's um really just being okay with it not being mm. the way you want it to be. Like until we get to the full time, it's just like, oh, well, if I only have 10 minutes, let's just give the 10 minutes that I have now and go forward and being okay 
with where God has you at, at this moment right now. So I can not, you know, give all day, eight hours to what I want to do. But if I have those extra 10 minutes, I'm like, well, let me just steward these 10 minutes and then just hope that as time goes on, we can build up to more. But that's really what it is. Just I get after it. I wake up early and I just get after it. I'm not, I just find the time to do it. How you said that you would just steward the 10 minutes. So it's not about the lack of time that you have is what you can do with what you have and giving your best, even if it's that five, right. 10, 15 minutes. That's something that I definitely need to, to take a hold of. <laughs> well, I think that that's the whole premise of being consistent. And I talk about this um, in the ebook that I'm working on now is that consistency is the goal. And so, so many people will tell you, like, if you're not working out for three hours, if you're not eating healthy every three, you know, all three meals of the day, if you're not, you know, spending five hours working on your business, then it's not for anything. Or I used to feel that way. Like, if I'm not giving it my all, like, all day, Mm. blood, sweat, and tears all the time, then it's not going to count for anything. And it's like, no, it's showing up. That's what you're doing. You're showing up with what you have. And then hopefully it can be more, but just like, you know, you got to steward your money where it's at. You got to steward your time where it's at because you're building that habit up now. It's just being consistent now. And it's okay if you can't dedicate all the time you want to, but what can Mm. you do with what you have? Mm. So I'm going to ask you another question, right? So when when it comes down to, I know like religion and spirituality, sometimes when it comes to you know, when you started sharing it, I'm going to, I don't want to assume, but I would say, what were some of the challenges or fears that you had when you decided to say, okay, I'm going to share this. And how did you, you know, navigate through that? Well, there were a lot of, there's a lot of layers to that. onion. um, I'm not, I'm not a religious, uh, Like, I didn't study theology. I don't, you know, like, you know that people can get real stiff when it comes to, like, their Bible. They're like, but you don't know the Greek, and you don't know this, and you don't know that context, and this, da, 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 da. You don't know the culture of the Jewish people of that time. You don't know any of that stuff. And so all that was really intimidating in the fact that it's just like, I don't know anything. But it's like, then you're reminded of the fact that, who did Jesus pick? He didn't pick no religious people. He picked fishermen. They didn't know. You know, they didn't know anything. And so it's just like, if you're feeling, if the Holy Spirit is leading, God's leading you in a direction, you have to trust that he's going to make up the rest. That's where, again, it just, you just got to show up and you'll be available. Like he's got plenty of work for people to do. People just aren't showing up because we're too conditioned to think that, oh, I'm not in the right position. I'm not educated enough. I'm not, you know, well versed in the Bible enough to even be able to say anything. But it's just like, ultimately Jesus wasn't either like I mean he didn't have any training and he was still preaching and so for me it was just like not being caught up in like what I don't know but just being available to like share what I do know and a lot of that is experience that I have in my life but that's what people relate to the most people don't really want to hear your rules and regulations about anything they want to know your relationship and how it's affected your real life with your real bills and your real kids. Like they want to know what that's like, not like theoretically, but how is that, ha- how is that working in 2021 after a pandemic or during a pandemic? And, that's and what that they want to so know. True. I have my, my screensaver on my phone uh, is it says that you can preach a better sermon with your life than with your lips. And, and I think especially now right. with the, the social media days exactly. and the way that, that things are going, especially when it comes to like the inspirational, you know, and stuff like that, that they need to see it. They need to see the consistency. They're looking for examples. They're looking, people are just looking for, to be led and to be inspired. And so they're not necessarily, there's plenty of people right. here with no education on stuff and they're doing wonderful jobs because they put in they put in the reps all the mornings that you're waking up spending time with god and being able to receive that and navigate through your job and you know maybe uh, difficult people and people are saying like well how did she not you know just freak out right there you know what i'm saying so (laughs) and then you know you can be like this is what i did uh right it's rough listen it's it's we like if we can I always say like 
how I used to say, like, I'm Raggedy Rita, or I, I changed it to Raggedy Rashida. But anyway, I say Raggedy Rashida because it's like, we also feel like we have to, like, be at this place where we've arrived at, like, this, I don't know, mm. I'm so close to God, like, I'm up here. But you're still in me like none of our righteousness nothing good that we've done is just is weighing puts any weight on anything else and so where's if you just realize like i'm not perfect i'm never going to be i'm just trying to gradually just grow and that's not and that's all god really wants is just like to show up and just be in relationship with him mm-hmm. and that's it like we make it so hard and a lot, I mean, I feel like I've been ruled to death and I feel like a lot of women, you know, who might've been raised religious or like in the church, you're ruled to death. You're told what you're not supposed to do, where you're not supposed to go, what you're not supposed to eat, what you're not supposed to drink, what you're not supposed to wear, you know, and you've been ruled to death by somebody who, who you don't even know. The rules and it's like, well, how, why would I listen? Right, right, right. But then also the, the, the ultimate person or God is telling you like God has his long list of stuff that you're not supposed to do, but you're not, they're not even telling you to be in a relationship with him. They're just telling you, mm. he's telling you not to do all this stuff. And so you're like, well, I don't know him like that either. And so I, I don't know you and I don't know him like that. And so it's really where, what really wanted started me to start my first devotional was just like being really vulnerable in the fact that I knew I should be in a relationship with God, but it's like, I didn't know him like that. Like he wants 10% of my money. I don't know him like that. You're not giving a stranger on the street 10% of your money. You're not. You're not showing up every Mm -hmm. week to see somebody you Mm -hmm. don't know. That's the problem. We'll teach the rules and regulation, but we won't even think like, do you even want to know him like that? Do you even care to know him like that? And so we'll fake the funk. Like, oh, I love the Lord. It's like, you don't even really know him and you really don't want to spend time with him. And that's okay. But just be real so that you can move forward past that part. But we we stay in this weird place where we're like faking it, where we're like, I don't I know I should, but I don't want to be honest in the fact that I'm not really feeling God like that. But it's like at the end of the day, the only people you stunned for is us. God knows. He know you're not showing up. He know you don't care. He know you I mean and, and that's not and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. Like that's the process of life, but we're not even being open and vulnerable enough to where we can say, Lord, I really don't check for you, but I want to, but we feel like we have to be like at this certain level and we're not, and it's okay. And so that's why I say for women like us, you need to see, seek him every single day for yourself, because that is the only way that we can really achieve everything that we want in this life and life after. Like we can have peace, we can have joy, we can have all of that now. And that doesn't come from being ruled to death. That comes from just being in love with somebody you know has your back no matter what, who's gonna fight for you no matter what, who died for you and is gonna fight for you. So it's just like being being in that and sitting in that for yourself, that's what we need. Mm. You know, we need that. So that's, that's, that's why I always, I'm like, just like, girl, take the time because we're so bogged down. Like that, that pandemic really took a number, did a number on so many people. And it's like, how are we saying we're going to faith and we're like on the brink? And it's just like, we've got to be leaning on something strong, bigger than us, especially black women. Mm. We've got to be leaning on something bigger than us um, because they'll white supremacy you to death that you can't have this and you can't have that. And it's just like, well, I'm in relationship with someone who owns the whole world, so why can't I? And so it's like, we put these limits on man-made stuff when it's just like, God never told me that. And if he want me to have this business, he gonna do it. And I'm not gonna have to have a loan and I'm not gonna have to beg, borrow, and steal. I have to claw my way and work my way to death for it. I'm like, I'm, 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 so, I'm so far past that now. And that's what I want for us is for us to understand, like, we don't have to live in these mediocre lives where we're just scraping by, hoping and wishing. And, you know, maybe, maybe not. No, I expect God to do major things because we t- we close and he already knows me like that. So I, I don't expect anything less. 
and you're not going to white supremacy me to death and you're not going to tell me what I can and cannot have because mm. nobody told told well, you that. Well, well, I'm about to say, no, you, you good. You good. While I got you hyped, I'm sorry. I'm going I'm I'm to take, <laughs> take six tips from you today. While I got you hyped, right, I'm going to go ahead. I, I would like you to share three tips to encourage anybody, women of color, anybody, really, on how to kind of make us their steps towards improving their spiritual lives. Three tips there, and then I'm gonna ask you for a different three tips after that for this spiritually, or in in order to to get to, to know God better. What are three tips that you would give? People okay, that are just initiating that particular conversation. For me, the spiritual life. Uh, forget everything everybody taught you, and go to the source, and the source is God. That's it. That's my number one thing. Well, it's spending time with him every single day and then forget everything everybody ever taught you and go directly to the source. He will tell you, like the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit leads us into all knowing truth. There's not a secret. <laughs> There's not a secret. I don't know what to tell you. There's not a secret. And then the third thing is just, just stick with it. The consistency it has, you show up and you've got to stick with it because it's every day. Somebody's going to cut you off in traffic. Somebody's going to be going slow. Somebody's going to be slow in the checkout line. They don't know how to use self-checkout. Somebody is going to, your child, Lord have mercy, you know, your your spouse, your partner, somebody. It's, it's always going to be something. The light's going to go, I don't know. Mm. It's going to be something. Added. The flight's going to be delayed. I don't know. But it's gonna be delayed. The bag might be lost. Listen, he must be but telling you, you everything to, that just happened to me listen. recently. But okay, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be there. But it's just like we have to be sold out on the fact that there's something bigger than this, and everything is gonna try to derail you from what you're supposed to be doing ultimately. And so we can't get caught up in that stuff. And the only way we can be able to just lean in and go through life and keep the joy and peace that we have, which people, people going to try to steal it. They're going to try to steal it. Um, the only way we can keep that is we're centered and we're grounded and we skip the most important part. And I always say that the most important mm -hmm. part of your day is spending time with God. If that's not for him, he deserves the glory and, and the praise and honor, but it's for us. We need it. We're the ones barely scraping by. I, I'm scrape, I'm crawling to the coffee pot in the morning. I'm crawling to the coffee pot. And it's just like, no. So I would, those are the three things is show up, um, forget everything you ever knew and just be consistent in it and just seek God every single day to get that foundation. Oh, no, I didn't even, I wanted you to have And then that. what was the second part? I'm sorry. Part so I'll throw it out now. The, the second part is for um, okay. anyone looking to, maybe produce digital products. So I, I don't, I don't know if yours, I believe yours is, I don't know if it's digital and physical, but people who are looking to create products, eBooks and, and, and maybe even devotionals, but maybe just a few tips on how they could get started if they were interested in something like that. Uh, I'll hmm. be okay. I started. Okay. I started off with a physical product because I'm a pen and paper kind of girl. I'm Amen old. Amen to the 80s. So was I. I was born in the 80s. So I'm pen and paper. Hello. Hello. So I am pen and paper down. So I love a good writing utensil. But in for if you're just getting started, I would say go digital. And you can create something... I wrote, I created my whole, the, the journal that, the physical journal that I made, I used Canva. That's, and I used the free version. I wasn't even using the $12 version. I used the free version to make that. Um, I think I took like a $35 class on like how to make journals on Canva. It was like so easy. It was, it, it was so easy. Um, so if you want to make a physical product, yes. But if you don't have the money behind it, because you do, unless you like doing I bought all my journals flat out. No, so no, that's fine. the only way I know how to okay. do it. I'm sorry. If somebody else has a better way. Please tell me. But I bought all my journals. So if you don't have the money to put behind 
the actual physical product to get the inventory, then focusing on doing a digital product, there's nothing wrong with that. You can definitely just upload it and then like do a workflow and send it out to everybody. Um, so I started off with a physical journal, but I just released a digital version of the journal. It's like an all new journal. It's just a digital version of it. So it's, I think it'll be more accessible. You can, it's fillable. You can write on it on like the iPad or whatever, but, um, I would say if you're trying to save dollars, go digital first. Like you can, that can go to anybody. You And it doesn't take that much, like you're not going to have like overhead basically as far as like needing to have inventory and buy stuff and pay people. That's, it's just all you. So I would say if you can go digital, go digital. If I could do it again, I might have. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm I like, I like physical. physical like, I, I <laughs> but, love physical. I think, I think that one of the things that we don't realize in life, we just realize it here and there. I'm definitely more accountable to things once I write it down, which is why I don't write as much because I know I have a lot to say, which is weird. It's weird. So I I resort to video because I don't have to write it. You, it, see, yeah. but I, but see, oh, instead of writing, you just talk it out. See, I use the voice notes for that. And then I'm just like, I just feel like, like just now I was running my mouth on this podcast and I was just like, girl, shut up. <laughs> but I get you. I, when I get on the voice, I'm like, it's 30 That's minutes. Fine. You That's still what, talk. I mean, I like to listen like, to what, things what do we do times back. But no, there, there's definitely value in. And um, yeah, that's me all day long. There's value in writing things down. I think you hold yourself more accountable when yes. you do write something and you have something to go back and look at the progress. So that's what I really enjoy about having journals as well. But in this digital world, <laughs> things yeah. are different. Some people like it, you know, they don't want to feel like they have to lug a journal around to work or, you know, everywhere they can just kind of do it anywhere on their phone or their ipad or computer so yeah i get it but i'm just like a physical journal person so that's i would definitely say if you can you can afford the inventory go with the physical um and just find a supplier that can just get you as many journals as possible or whatever product that's possible and then go from there but if it, it, it's also a motivation too when you have a box when you have boxes Sit in your house. You can promote it. They can look at you dead in your I'm face. Still, I'm still here. Dead I'm still here. in your face. <laughs> I'm still here collecting dust. And so you're going to be like, hey, Come guys, sale journals. Don't forget it. <laughs> Come and get it now, Listen, please. Everything must go. Everything must go. It's definitely been an encouragement for me. Not necessarily to get my life together, but to understand that there's there's purpose in everything, and we can. You know, I, I like the, the the reflective part of of what we we talked about today. Um, what I want you to do now is please share with everyone where we can follow, support, and purchase uh, the things, the resources that you have created. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, BeConsistentGirl.com. That's where you can find the digital products, the physical products. Um, yeah, go there, BeConsistentGirl.com. If you want to follow along on Instagram, um, BeConsistentGirl um, on Instagram. And then um, at Eat Whole Live Fit on Instagram, too. I just kind of document the food. Again, like I talked about at the beginning, just like food, I don't know, stuff like that. But yeah, all my spiritual stuff all the products and all that be consistent girl.com for sure um and for your listeners i have a i can send them if you email me hello at be consistent girl.com i'll just send you the free version a free copy of the um digital journal the digital version of the journal i have that for your listeners just email me and i'll send it to you uh oh i hope y'all are listening yeah i hope y'all listen i'll put it i'll put it in the show notes we'll see who, please who's paying if you want to yeah please i'll be more than happy to send it to you um and thank you for letting me run my mouth i really went off for a second it was just like what but yeah oh i was over i was about to run around the room i was like it's, it's all good i was just like yes I, yeah that's yeah. funny let's go yeah but <laughs> Yeah, just be consistent. Just show up. It's it's fine. 
don't let anybody tell you anything else it's fine (laughs) (laughs) that's amazing well i want to thank everyone for listening to this episode please make sure you check the show notes so that you can get your free copy of the digital journal here that melissa is sharing with us today and if you are a unicorn yourself or you know anybody else that's a unicorn that i can have a conversation with please please (laughs) go ahead and shoot me a dm or make a comment and we'll see you all next time